Hello, welcome to episode 283 of the Casual Tryhard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And today we have like a smorgasbord of uh, things to talk about, a little B&R or lack thereof, um, and then MH3 Limited stuff. Yeah, it's uh, I guess it's been a little bit since we had a normal episode because we've been in perpetual spoiler season here. And uh, it took us three weeks to get through MH3 spoilers, so we got some stuff to catch up on. Just a little bit. Yep. All right. So if you have ideas for next week's show or shows in the future, or maybe not next week's show because uh, someone is going to Florida. Yep. It's not so... hot enough here, so let's go someplace <laughs> hotter. But if you have ideas for future shows, uh, let us know. Um, reach out to us on Facebook, Discord, Twitter. Uh, email just let us know what you want us to talk about yep. uh say hey like brian said all those links are down in the description hit us up we want to hear from you if you're looking to support the show there's a couple ways you can do it the first is with our tcg player affiliate link casual tryhard.com slash tcg surf on over there do your shopping pick up your modern horizons cards oh that's uh i meant to ask you in the pre-show and i didn't so i'm gonna insert it here in the intro okay um have any of the crazy prices come back to reality yet? Some, but not not enough. Yeah. Like the 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 like the playable cards are still like twenty to fifty dollars. Oof. Yeah, that's but nuts. primal prayers, which is apparently not playable, is like fifty cents. So I bought some. Nice. And I bought a, and I bought like a bunch of random cube things. So I was there like, you go. okay. Well, if you're looking for some primal prayers or random cube things, TCG players your place to do it. Use our affiliate link and you can support the show at the same time. We would really appreciate it. If you're looking to support us more directly, patreon.com slash casual tryhardmtg is where you can go do that. Uh, chip a couple bucks in, you get access to our show notes, so you get kind of a sneak peek about what the episode's going to be about. And um, you also get access to our pre-show, about another hour's worth of content out of us every week. Completely unplanned, unscripted, unedited, on anything. Just... I mean, is that is that a version of is uh, that's our unshow? It's our unshow. Oh, are we gonna have to rename the pre-show the unshow? Maybe we might uncut, unedited, yeah, unscripted. It's the unshow. Yeah. So if you want access to the unshow, uh, as opposed to the gun show, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so tiny. So tiny. Uh, surf on over to patreon.com slash casual mtg and chip a couple bucks in support the show and watch the unshow oh it took us five years to get to the unshow that's right <laughs> <laughs> 283 <laughs> episodes later better late than never yep. uh so all right so i saw no twitter discourse about our first topic today okay <laughs> which was uh it was a busy day which was the bnr announcement oh it was yesterday or yesterday okay yeah. so i've seen no twitter discourse about this so uh well there i mean there was happen? basically no announcement there was no changes in any formats um okay probably not something that we even need to spend a ton of time on um just mainly that for the most part i guess wizards is happy with where things are or at least willing to wait until things change before they make a change. Gotcha. Um, they said for standard, things are okay-ish, and they want to see what rotation does in the fall. Yeah. I mean, so. you've had uh, the Tri-Lands, the New Capenna Fetch Lands uh, around for a really long time, and that has... Um, enabled like domain mm -hmm. team or al analyst uh which you know are really powerful decks we've had rafine yep. and esper friends around for a while so just kind of like hanging out to to rotation mm -hmm. is probably like just the best course because they're going to it's going to shake things up yep and like hopefully cards that are currently unplayable will become playable they, uh, I think the two cards that they mentioned being on their radar were Atraxa and Knight Errant of Eos. Um, but like, really? Said, yep. Like, I could totally understand Atraxa 
right? Like, that's one of those, like, it's a yeah. commander card. Oops, we missed. You can get to seven mana way too easy in current magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, I guess I don't know how good, like, red white is, like, the convoke deck is in standard. I, I don't but know that like, it's good enough to warrant a ban, but evidently I mean. it's at least on their radar. But, like, I, I guess that, like, Shieldred isn't as, like, played now because everyone just, like, packs a bajillion removal spells because you just, like, play at Black X Mirrors. Right. So it doesn't hang around too much, but, like, like that card's just, like, a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't imagine being, like, oh, re- like, of the deck that loses to Infest, that's the problem. <laughs> we, yeah. we print, like, a new Infest every single set yep i don't really think that that's it. like it feels like a deck that if you like want to beat it you're just like yeah i can beat this no problem mm-hmm. it's really hard to convoke when you have no creatures yeah I, I think i think that they're um just keeping an eye on it because it yeah. is you know the deck's been around for a while now and i don't think it gets hit super hard at rotation either um well they're an epicure i think i was gonna say epicure but you keep the the uh, warren of the inner sky yeah the warden of the inner sky and then um resolute reinforcements yeah and like every every set has like some sort of like two mana make two one ones Mm -hmm. card so like or like you know now every set has a like one mana make a trinket artifact mm-hmm. so like it, it could just stay around for a while yeah. so i could see i could see that yep so that was basically it for standard um like i said no changes in any format so no changes in pioneer either um the only thing they said they're even watching in pioneer is amalia what have we learned boys and girls if Brian likes a deck and has the cards for it, they're coming for it. Yep. They're just like, oh, we're just, we're just, we're just watching. Like, we, 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 we saw the TCG player order reports, and so uh, we are now watching Amalia because he owns those cards. Well, to be fair, they said it's not for a power level reason. It's for um, time constraints or unintentional draws. Mm-hmm. Because the but deck a lot sometimes of the, just draws. Yeah, but like a lot of the uh, like the the unintentional draws are like oftentimes intentional, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Where like you are dead. Right. But you then like pump their Amalia past twenty. Yeah. So like they're not unintentional draws. Like someone has made a decision to draw the game. You know what I mean, though. I, I know what you mean, though, but yeah, like, you know, it's like, I mean, I can see it, like, it's kind of a weirdly templated card. Like, it was like, if Amelia has 20 or more power, that's mm-hmm. all it needed to say was 20 or more. Yeah. And then, like, it would just blow up the world, which would, like, make going off, like, make going off again, like, fine. Mm-hmm. And would, like, make it so you couldn't get the draws. Yeah. But because they were like the way they worded it, like you know, twenty power, exactly. Yeah. So that's on them. Sure, but they said that's why they're watching it. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, modern's a new format. Right, and there's a modern pro tour. Yeah, like so. this weekend. Uh, either this weekend or next weekend. Yeah, this weekend. It's uh, I I know that like. LSV and Jim Davis are uh, getting ready for it. Um, uh, uh, where? No, I don't care about your triangle. Like where? When is it? Next, what is the date for the next MTG Pro Tour? June twenty eighth through thirtieth. This weekend. Okay. There we go. This weekend in. So obviously they're not gonna. After just shaking the format up with a bag of bees, they're not gonna <laughs> ban something out of it. So exactly. Why do these bees flip over into <laughs> even better bees? Ah! 
if we learned anything from Hogak is when you ban something from the best deck that's untested, you end up with a better deck. Yes. <laughs> just the Nick Cage with the beads on his head, but it's just a bunch of like a Johnny's. Yeah. A um, bunch of Nadu's. Nadu, yeah. Nadu. Nadu, yeah. Nadu, Nadu. Uh, and then Legacy, they're like, is this a format we don't care? Uh, basically. Uh, we are approaching Legacy similarly to Modern now. That's about it. We intend to take it. a hard look at Legacy in our next announcement announcement coming in August. So I guess that's something. Okay. And then Vintage, who cares about Vintage? And I didn't yeah. read any of the Arena format stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, I, I will probably be... Um, uh, uh, dipping my toes into either historic or um, timeless, probably timeless. Uh, yeah. Um, just um, just to uh, try to play uh, Guide of Souls, Primal Prayers, Sarek. Mm. Yes. J- just to just to to feel something, <laughs> but um, I don't. Um, yeah, but I don't really like care one way or the other. I know that I watched uh, Jim Davis put together like some like historic Eldrazi deck mm-hmm. and uh, was bemoaning the fact that like they he played like two or three matches and the per- it was just like Modern Horizons 3 block constructed. Yeah. Like he did not play against any like non-Modern Horizons cards basically. Well I mean I don't know what else you expect when you inject the most powerful cards on Arena into Arena. Yeah like he he was just bummed because he enjoyed historic for the fact that you could yeah. like brew in it. Yeah. And like, you know, timeless is just like you go play the most efficient, like powerful thing. Mm-hmm. And now like that seems to just be historic also historic now. And he's like, oh, like this is not like what I liked about historic. I liked because you could just do random stuff in historic. Yeah. It's like no more. No more. So, yeah, I mean. That's all well and good. I know that uh, I saw Gavin had a tweet that he was super happy with how Popper Geddon went. Mm-hmm. There were like seven different decks in the top uh, in the top eight. Yeah, I um, saw something about um, like record viewership. Okay, like on Twitch, it was like the most most watched, watched. Popper event. Yeah, uh, not just Popper. I think it was the most popular stream on Magic. Twitter, oh wow, or on Twitter, like for for Magic, but. Most popular magic uh, stream or whatever. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, so that's. Cool. I mean, uh, sneaky snacker made the top eight. Yeah. Uh, ra- uh, in Rakdos Madness. Yeah. So like, you faithless looting away your sneaky snackers, then you flash back your faithless looting, and they come back. Yeah. Um, like the next turn. Um, and then like writhing Chrys- chrysalis showed up. Oh yeah. Uh, like just as good in like, popper as it is in MH three draft. Yeah, I think like it was in like they, they had mentioned like red green like Ponza style decks. Oh, okay, I can see that. I mean, it's a it's a four or five reach that also like gives you that kind of costs two mana. Right. Um, and then you know that stupid like borderline unplayable like shatter plus like pump spell. Yeah. That randomly has split second. Yeah. Did you know that that is getting played in Popper? Why is in that combo goblins? Because split second says no one can use any abilities that are not mana ability. Um, Skirk Prospector's sacrifice is ability. Mana ability. So you can go. Uh, first day of class, yeah. like, and then play the um, play the split second card, mm-hmm. and then with it on the stack, yeah, make infinite mana, yep, and win the game. It is effectively like you're just teferying your opponent. Yeah, it's like two mana to ferry, like two mana silence in. In red, in popper. 
pretty cool. I was like, that's okay. We can, we can, we can support this. This is, yep. this is a pretty good use of, of weird, weird rules, interactions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, that's okay. kind of what Popper's about though, right? Yeah. So yeah, like that's, that's all well and good. Like, uh, I kind of want to, I want to check again. I kind of want to try to get, uh, I had guide of souls in my cart and I did not pull the trigger, but there's like a red white, like energy deck in modern. Mm-hmm. And like, that's playing Guide of Souls. I'm like, I don't care about that. I just need it for primal prayers. Like, I don't want to pen. <laughs> like, these are three dollars right now. I just need to buy them before they go to like twenty dollars. Yeah. Um, like it's all I care about. It's just my stupid primal prayers deck. <laughs> I have every, I have, the, I have everything but Guide of Souls. So, give me my Guide of Souls, and then they can do whatever. Come on, like, your twelve dollars. Get them coming. Exactly. I I need to because like I just want like to have guide of souls and like it's a soul it's a soul warden for amalia yep. you can just have like the amalia combo in modern which has been played a little bit mm-hmm. and then you can also primal prayers a Sarak people put it together like just good clean magic mm-hmm. lose every game but just like you know <laughs> be like you fun. know what this is fine this is what i signed up for was to go like Oh three at this F and M, this is fine. Yep, that uh, that's a good segue into one of our topics because okay. that's a good deck to bring to like a win a box, like something that's not super high stakes, but you still want to do well in something mm-hmm. that you're doing for fun. That'd be a good win a box deck. Yes, and win a boxes are coming to arena. Yeah what what was the official name of it? It was like. It was something weird. I didn't understand what it was trying to say until I clicked on it and saw what it was. Like, it was like physical. Uh, no, I don't remember. I'd have to open Arena, and I don't want to crash the podcast right now, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, introducing Arena Direct. Arena Direct. Yep. Yeah. Which terrible, terrible naming. Yep. Just because when I saw Arena Direct. What I thought of is like kind of the big thing in video games right now Mm -hmm. are directs like the Nintendo direct where Nintendo, instead of going to like E3 or the game awards, they just put on their own, they like put together their own like 35 minute, like direct to customer presentation. And there's, there's Xbox directs and there are PlayStation directs or Sony directs. So I was like, arena direct like are they like hey we're gonna make the game not garbage uh because <laughs> all the problems i have with like on my pc and on my laptop or on my laptop and then on my uh ipad whenever i like google them there are just pages of like reddit posts there was from, a like, massive it, it must have been a back-end update today okay because uh, i tried to on my lunch break, I tried to sign on, and I think it had already been down for at least an hour or two. I saw somewhere there was an announcement it was going to be down for like an hour and a half or two hours sometime. Yeah. Uh, I saw, it like, because, like, I've been running into an Anthony Rain in too. Like, so he's been back on the arena train a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, where, like, it'll just, like, do, like, waiting for server. Yeah. It'll just, like, spin waiting for server for, like, ever. Yeah. So, like, when I'm playing on my on my laptop, I'll, like, get into the game. It'll do waiting for server. Or it'll, like, like be on the waiting screen. It'll do waiting for server. And then I can watch everything happen in the background. And as soon as I match with my opponent, mm-hmm. it goes to normal and works. Yeah. And I'm like, why is it doing this? This is so weird. Like, is this, like, some goof where this is, I'm not supposed to be seeing this? Um, but anyway, but, uh, but you like, might want to try your iPad again if they uh, did a big fix. Maybe yeah, if they made sweeping changes on the. Not that I know it's a back end thing, but yeah, they made like a huge update. Yeah, I don't think there was any hopefully. um any update on our end. I think it was all okay. all server side. But and also like apparently, if you play Arena on a Mac, you can't buy gems. Oh really? It just doesn't let you. It disconnects from the server whenever you try to buy gems. Weird. And this has been going on for, from what I can gather on Reddit, multiple years. Interesting. People are like, 
my workaround is that I buy them on my phone. All right. I'm like, the workaround is you don't buy gems. Wait, but, but how many people like daily drive a Mac but don't have an iPhone? Well, they have a phone, so they're go- they go on their phone to buy gems because oh, they can't buy it on their you. Mac. Yep. So if you're on your Mac and you hit like buy gems, it like just says waiting for server and never lets you buy the gems. I gotcha. So then people that want to buy gems go on their phone yeah. and buy gems. And I'm like, stop giving them money <laughs> when they don't want to take your money. Yeah, they Make don't it so it's money, convenient though. for you to give them money. Right. Like, man, I want to give this person money, but I've got to like, Get out another screen, mm-hmm. log in and fiddle with that. No, if they want your money, make it easy. Yep. Um, like if you like went to McDonald's and they made you get out of your car and walk up and like walk up to the window. Yeah. To like get your food, then you had to get back in your car. Like as at the drive-through, you like order at the window, and they're like, "We don't take money from vehicles," so you have to like <laughs> walk up. It's like no one would do this. Right. But there's no accountability for Hasbro. Anyway, anyway. Um, hopefully that fixes some stuff. Yeah, hopefully. But they have brought to us Arena Direct, mm-hmm. which is uh, a way to win physical magic cards sent to your home. A box of them. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I think it's kind of weird that they're... I mean, it's, it's weird and it's not. But it's kind of weird that they're doing a booster box. For the mm-hmm. prize, when I guess the only analog we have for this is set redemption on Moto. Yeah. And this is like a very different approach than that. Well, I kind of took it as like it's like an arena open, mm-hmm. but it seems like it's more work. Right? Like more work arena... on Wizard's End? Yeah. yeah like, because you could set it up that, like, hey, if you go. Six and two, which is what this is. If you go, well, if you go six and one, mm-hmm. if you get six wins, they send you a play booster box yep. of MH3. Now, alternatively, they could just give you money with a few keystrokes, not have to put a physical thing in a box right. and mail it to you, and then you could use that money. To buy a play booster of uh, MH3. Yeah. So, like, like, maybe they think more people will respond to this. I can see where, like, hey, like, more, like, maybe more people will be, like, enticed by this than, like, just, like, money. Mm -hmm. Again, we have small monkey brains and don't understand statistics and stuff well. Is the price the same? It is... I think it might be more than an arena open. So it's 5,000 gems for mm. for this. Um, uh, so I'm not... I'm looking to see like what the what the buy-in is for... Uh, and you can fire as many bullets as you want. I don't know if you can win multiple boxes in the... I didn't read the terms and conditions. Yeah, I didn't. But I don't know if you can win multiple boxes. Like, I don't know if you can just, like, grind boxes out on them. Oh, how much? Uh, oh. It is the same price as an arena open. Okay. But in an arena uh, open, you can enter with... Um, you can enter with gold. Here, you can only enter with gems. Only gems. Um. So, it looks like it's being fulfilled through Scale Fast. Okay. Which is the secret lair distribution. Okay. Um. Which they will I, arrive in four to six months. Well. No, I think like the mo- more recent secret layers have been arriving super fast because they're okay. not print to demand anymore. Okay, they just print a bunch of them. Okay. Well, they they only print like they only sell a certain amount. They print an amount and then they sell that amount. Okay. That's it. Um, gotcha. The more recent ones have been working that way. 
Um, but this means that a booster box also costs wizards nothing because it's being directly fulfilled. I mean, they still like had to, I guess like it cost them like 20 bucks to like, if that to like make the right to like make the cars and stuff. So yeah, they're, they're giving you, you're paying them like what 5,000 gems is like $25. Mm-hmm. And they're giving you something that may have cost them twenty five dollars in production costs, right? But like as the prize, though, um, like what percentage of people are going to be able to ace one of these things to get a box? You know what I mean? Oh no, no, like like if you win, if you get the box, a uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast breaks even, right? But they just are printing money for everyone who doesn't, mm-hmm. and like. You know, good for them. Like I guess, like I can see where, like the the argument of giving you whatever three hundred dollars to go buy a box costs them three hundred dollars, right? But to give you a box, right, right, like you know, even with shipping and stuff, even if it costs them like you know, you know, ten bucks to ship it, mm-hmm. right, like they're still going to end up ahead. And, um, like, I think they very specifically, like, six and two is odd, right? Like, everything on... So if you get to five wins, you get your money back. Mm-hmm. If you get you get nothing for one, two, and three wins. I think you get 250 for four wins, 5,000 for five wins and then the box and 5,000 for six. Is that uh, it? One through three is nothing. Four wins is 2,000. Five wins is 5,000. Six wins is box. Oh, but no gems for box. It's just box. Right. Okay. Um, so like th- how many limited events fire in a given season? Right. Tons, right? Yeah they know exactly how what percentage of them m- make it to 6 1 uh y- right yes however um these are sealed they're not draft oh they're sealed i believe i know the one that's like this weekend is sealed i'm pretty sure they're both sealed okay i mean but again the how numbers are a little them? different but yes how many seals are like happen? Tons, right? Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, uh, Modern Horizons three. Like, I just assumed it was like, yeah, sealed best of one. You are correct. Yes. Okay. So, like, they know exactly how many people go six one. Mm-hmm. So, like, they I think they very specifically make it that you have to go six one. Because they're like, oh, only like, are we being generous? Ten percent, yeah, of people, maybe go six one, right? So they know that ninety percent for every box they send out, they are getting nine boxes of money, right? Or like in production value. So like it's just like a a free. It's just free, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, both of them are sealed. And that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I wish that, I wish they were draft instead of sealed. Yeah. Mm. Oh. You see, in the unlikely event that supplies run out, Wizard of the Coast, in its sole discretion, may replace this with a $250 cash price. So if we run out of boxes, I guess we'll give you the money to buy a box. Yeah. For some reason, I don't think that's going to happen. I do, yeah. I do not think they're going to run out of box. Yeah. Um. So, are you interested in this? So, I. I was briefly interested. I was like, oh, but it would be fun to like, do this. Hearing that it is sealed, I am less less in. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that. Um, this format is pretty high synergy. 
Mm-hmm. And like sealed often does not lend itself to those kind of those kind of formats well, where you're just like, oh man, like I got like two energy rares and nothing that I got makes some, energy. Like, yeah, nothing that makes energy or like I got an Ulabog and an Emrakul, but I have no way to ramp into yeah. them. Amazing. So like that's a little like yeah. And the other thing. This is where I initially came down. I was like, oh, look, like I could do... i maybe do one or two of these. And I looked at how many gems I had. Mm. And I was like, well, if I did two, that is akin to doing, like, seven drafts. Yep. So, like, would I want to trade seven drafts for two seals? And I was like, I don't think so. Like, even and when I thought they were drafts, I was like, do I want to trade seven drafts for two drafts? And I was like, nah, probably not. Like, um, I don't mind the fact that it's sealed. I tend to like sealed. Mm-hmm. And I think if sealed was as good a value as draft is on Arena, yeah. I would probably do more seals than I do. Um, but drafting is just such better value. Um, yeah. like there's kind of no point in doing seals on Arena. Um, so like that part of it doesn't bother me. Um, but like you said, I don't think I'm interested in forfeiting seven drafts for the chance at a box. Yeah, like and I I understand that these boxes have like pretty good value and yada blah blah blah. But like I don't know, the I've done a lot of drafts in this format. Mm-hmm. I have I do not, I have one, two, three, four, seven win drafts, and one, two, three, four, five, six win drafts, right? And I I know, like, my last six win drafts started out one, two, so I would have been done. Right. Right, on game three. And like, so like, the the odds of me getting to six wins are they're not terrible, right? That was like what nine out of my twenty three drafts I've got six wins. Mm-hmm. But I think the number of six ones I've had might be like three, yeah, or something like. So, like, just for me personally, like, it just seems like at the end, I'm not going to have, like, I'm just going to, like, fire two bullets, go, like, three, two, Mm -hmm. and get nothing. Right. And just be like, well, there are three drafts that, like, I would have played, like, more games. Mm -hmm. Right? Even if I went 03, I would have played more games. Right. And, you know... Yeah, so, like, I understand the allure, but, like, I've not participated in Arena Opens either, because, like, I just do the math of, like, you know, I am ostensibly now a free-to-play player. Mm -hmm. And it's like, is this good value for me to, like, keep the the train rolling? Yeah. And I know, like, I only, like, I I check in with Limited. This is the first time we were talking on the pre-show. This is probably the first time in, like, a year. I've, like, gone hard on a format. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like where I want to, like, put my, like, limited arena box. Yep. Because, like, you could totally fall down, like, a rabbit hole. Oh, sure. And, like, just, like, get into, like, the gambler's fallacy of, like, oh, next time I'm going to have, like, three writhing, writhing chrysalis and, like, like, all this great stuff. And, like, now you spent 25,000 gems and you have, like, nothing left? Well, I mean, that's the thing that was sealed, is that where you might see two or three writhing chrysalis in a draft, like, the mm-hmm. chances of you seeing two in your sealed pool are almost non-existent. Yeah. But, like, you know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, yeah. I'll, like, I'll open a great pool. Yeah. Like, I'll open, like, you know, the amazing energy deck, and I'll be able to like, have this amazing energy deck and do a bunch of stuff with it, and then you're like, oh, I didn't open it. And yep. 
oh, I'm, here's another draft that I don't like, or another sealed I don't like, make it. Yep. So, yeah, like, I think it's fun. I think people will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to do a lot to separate people from gems. Sure. Well, it's, I mean, that's and, the point. Yeah, and I'm I'm assuming, you know, other than the fact that this is, you know, a way to make, like, money hand over fist, that they're probably trying to see, and now, like, this is kind of the, like, peak product to do it with, do people respond better to um, getting product as a prize yeah. or money? Like, you know, like, the, the arena opens, like, our, our slog, and you get, like, what, $2,000 at the end? Is that it? Uh, Is I it don't two? Know. I don't know. But whatever, right? You get some amount of dollars, right? Over these two events, are they going to get more people that do this event than do, like, an arena open? Right, like so, like would you then like maybe reevaluate the price structure mm-hmm. of arena arena open if you're like, oh hey, like we had you know a ton of people to do these, so like okay, we'll do like you know we'll do these for like the next like you know universes beyond set we'll always do these or we'll do or we'll do one arena open, but then we'll do like two of these and just like soak more people. Like each set rotation. I think um, they probably could have been a little bit more generous with the prizes on this, also. Oh, absolutely. But that's... Again, like, I think it all comes down to, like, like how, how many people go 3 1. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I'm sure that, again, they know that, like, uh, you know, 50% of people go 3 2 mm-hmm. or something. Right? And so they know that they're not going to have to pay half the entrance anything back. Right. So they, they got all the math figured out. Like, I'm sure that they just like know, like, hey, if like this many people like um, uh, sign up, here's how many boxes we're going to send out. Here's how much money we're gonna make. Like, th- there's like no guesswork to it. Yeah, because it's not like it's not like when you're just like at a GP, or, or sorry, rest in peace, at a Magic <laughs> Fest. Yeah, and you know it's like you know you have these like super small samples that you're like drawing from your experience. Like, how much product are we gonna need? Mm-hmm. Right. Like they just go like and like it brings up like over like a million seals. Yeah. The this is the number of six ones there are. Six ones are better. Here's the number of uh three ones are better. Yep. And they're and like they just have it like down and it's like, okay, like here's what we should pay out. Yep. Like I was in briefly and then I was just I did the math and I was like, I don't want to spend three drafts to get like one like a crack at a box and then like realistically I'm not going to win. Right. So I guess that's not like the fun like go team I'm a gamer like answer, but it's the like pragmatic I'm forty four years old and things hurt for no reason <laughs> answer. It's the like I well, I was walking around this morning and I was like why do I have a stabbing pain in my ankle and le- lower leg? Mm-hmm. I need to stop and like Move my foot in a circle and see if that fixes it. That's <laughs> like re- that's the equivalent reset. of uh, turning the power off and turning it back on. It, exactly. It's like yeah. let's say we could reset the bones in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're better. All right, let's go. Yeah. Uh, like that's that answer. Like maybe like maybe I'm fortunate that like Arena wasn't around for like 32 year old me. Because mm-hmm. I probably would have been like, oh, I'm I'm good enough to do this, and now I'm just like, <laughs> eh. Uh, has the game passed me by? Maybe. Have I lost my fastball? Maybe. Like, do I clap for someone when he pees? I do. So, like, maybe <laughs> maybe this isn't the game for me anymore. Good job, buddy. Uh, so. But no, I think it's, like, it's cool, but not for me. Yep, I agree. I was basically in the same boat when I read it. I didn't think that I was going to do any, but I'm glad they exist. Yes. 
it is a, a step in a direction that I don't hate, which is more than I can say for most for things, a lot of things from Wizards lately. Yeah. All right. And now... 45 MH3, minutes in, our main topic. Our main topic. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, limited, MH3 limited impressions. Yep. Um, so I'm going to steal something that came up on limited resources last week. Okay. What is the third most winning card based on games in hand win rate in the entire set? No, I have no idea. I haven't, uh, haven't listened to any limited resources in a long time. It's Writhing Chrysalis. Oh, that, I mean, that makes sense. There are only two, no, no, not common. There are only two cards in the entire oh. set that have a higher games in hand win rate than Writhing Chrysalis. And, and it's both Guide basically. of Souls yeah. and Ocelot Pride. Gotcha. It's Guide of Souls, Ocelot Pride, Writhing Chrysalis has a higher games in hand win rate than every other card in the format. It was rare mythic common. <laughs> it is yeah. Yeah, rare mythic common. Um like if you see a writhing chrysalis, pack one, pick one, you take it over anything but Guide of Souls and Ocelot Pride. And I think there's an argument that the deck you probably end up in with mm-hmm. Riving Chrysalis is better than the deck you end up with with Guide of Souls a lot of times. Yeah. Not that like the energy deck is bad. And like Ocelot Pride is just like generic white card that doesn't like go into a set. Or doesn't right. have like a like a real home. Yeah. Um but yeah like Riving Chrysalis is like the nuttiest common they've printed like maybe ever. Mm-hmm. Um, so the format is Jeskai Energy, Teamer Eldrazi, and no black cards. I've actually been doing halfway decent with uh, red black affinity. So, like, I think that it might be that situation where like people are not drafting the black cards a lot yeah and so like draft is like self-correcting itself and you're getting better decks well i I think the black cards in general are weak and Mm -hmm. like i'm i don't end up with any rares when i draft red black affinity but i've gotten some pretty killer six seven win decks and lately too like it wasn't just yeah typically Aggro is the way to go when a format first comes out because it punishes people that are trying to learn and do fun stuff. Um, like I had one, I had I had a seven win today. Like I started one this morning and finished it up before the the show tonight. So I've of my twenty one of my twenty three drafts, I think I have uh, drafted a deck that I would call black five times yeah and i have done eh, i think i have like a 50 percent win rate or like right around that with with them Mm -hmm. um so like not awful but like i've i've like no i've got totally smushed by some like black red decks i'm not saying that they like don't exist but like kind of the two main like kind of like tent post archetypes yeah are like you're like some Jeskai color of energy mm-hmm. or you are Eldrazi like Eldrazi. Yeah. Like you're like blue, green splash, red going huge or like you're red, green with a little blue and maybe you're like topping out at like five with like Titans Vanguard. That card's nuts. Cards absurd. Yeah. Like makes no sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, oh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm like making some slight cube tweaks. I'm like around the edges because I'm like, you know, it just says colorless creatures, it does. random artifact tokens are colorless creatures. Yep. Like there's all these other things that it could just pump, but, um, yeah, but like those, like I've had like the most, like I've had 
good energy decks mm -hmm. and good um, Eldrazi decks, and like my other things are usually kind of like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, and uh, I think that like my uh, I had a a red white energy deck that was like three conduit goblins Oof. and then some mix of hexblade slith and um uh smelted whatever the the one three that gives menace mm -hmm. and like you win almost a hundred percent of the games where you go like goblin into slith yeah and you just like attack them or you go um goblin into the menace guy mm. and then you attack with two menace things that in your attacking for five yeah and then you're like removal spell attack you for five again and then just dead. like oh that i had a fun that was a fun and interactive game of magic you played one removal <laughs> spell and wrecked me um the like so like writhing chrysalis uh the the like green the one two the night blade dryad or whatever mm -hmm. like that card is like sneaky important yep right giving you the colorless mana for like your skate battle mage mm -hmm. and stuff um the fetch lands like take those higher like those are really really good just in all the decks yeah um I regret I saw two curb abominations and did not take them in a draft. Oh, I haven't. Seen, I, was I don't in, even think I've seen that card yet. I was in a like in like a non crab abomination color, and like I was like, no, I want to take these other cards. And in retrospect, I was like, I could have had two of those. Mm -hmm. My deck would have been absurd. Um, how have you liked the uh, green blue guy? Oh, the, 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 the turtle. Yeah. Um, really good. Like, does, like, can kind of block, mm -hmm. like, serviceable on that end. And then going, like, having six mana on turn four mm -hmm. is kind of, kind of great. Yeah. Right, like. So you get like an Emrakul, which like I resolved like three times and won like every time, um, unsurprisingly. Uh, but like I think I had two or three of them in that deck, mm -hmm. right? Like it just allows you to like look at mana cost and just go like, oh, I can cast whatever. That. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? As long as I have the like whatever the generic mana symbol is in the front doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. I just care about like what are the color requirements. Yeah, the. I've had a couple decks that just had one of them, and I wasn't super impressed because, I mean, obviously just one. Yeah. You, you never know when it's going to show up. Um, and it always seemed that I didn't need it when it showed up. Um, yeah. But having two of them has been kind of insane because you see one w when it matters, and then by the time you see the second one, like, it just feeds the card draw. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think having, I don't know if having one is worth it, but having two is way better than having one, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like it's, like, and you probably are in more of a deck that, like, is is utilizing it. Yeah. Right? Like, if you're, like, if you have one, you're, like, okay, I'm kind of, but if you get, like, two. Yeah. Or, or, like, three, then you're just, like, I can just take every seven drop I see. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? Because, like, you're going to, like, play something on two that might make you a spawn. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to play this. And then on turn four, you're going to go seven drop. Yeah. And then they're going to go, like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm dead now. Because you played a turn four, seven, seven vigilance or a, a six, eight reach. Yeah. Also. Or an eight, the... four annihilator ward, whatever. Oh, my God. That card is so obnoxious. I've had people that, like... <laughs> one and then they've gained like 15 life and you're just like what am i supposed to do um but like the number of random things that have reach mm -hmm. in this set like it really does a good job of like you were you uh resolve the like the six eight reach guy and it's so hard to die 
Like, yeah. you get a little ground chump blocker, and then you can just, like, block the air. Mm-hmm. Or the, like, four or five that taps a thing. Yeah. It has reach. So now you've, like, you're holding down the air so does with the your chrysalis. enormous four or five. Yeah, for reasons beyond comprehension. Um, uh, I have noticed that I think there also is a lot of flying in this set, like, more than normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I've also had a bunch of decks that had, like, I wasn't trying to draft flyers and just ended up smushing people in the air just because I ended up with a bunch of flyers. Yeah, because, like, it feels like outside of, like, the teamer, like, Eldrazi decks or, like, the Eldrazi decks in general, there's not, like, there's not a bunch of other, like, random reach. Right. Right? Like, the cards we mentioned are all, like, Eldrazi cards. I'm trying to think of other things that have reach. Well, you mentioned that the four or five tapper. Yeah, but he's also kind of like an Eldrazi deck in yeah. a card, right? Like he's an Eldrazi. He's like one. He's like one blue pip. Mm-hmm. Um, so like he's easy to splash if you're kind of like That's red true. green. So, but yeah, like there's not like a like there's not a lot of like black. I don't think there's any black cards with like reach or like um. Okay. So, oh, the, so, totally different. The stupid three and a white, is it Airy Auxiliary? Like, three, three flyer support two? Oh, yeah. The card's so good. Yeah. Like, when you first look at it, you're like, oh, whatever, this card's like, it's so good. They're just like, oh, like, I guess I will do this and, like, trigger two effects and uh, now make your blocks horrific and then get in for 12 and you're just like, oh. <laughs> okay cool you know they're like i'll get back this land from my graveyard because i put a counter on my yep on my uh weird eternal witness thing and then i like put a counter on this other thing and like now i'll attack and trigger put more counters on things with something and you're just like hey, i got it i got it i get it i'm dead thank you very much have you had any I, uh weird eternal witness shenanigans i had i have not participated in them I did have someone like just looping them in a black green deck. Yeah, I've had, I've had, had a couple of decks that looped them pretty good. I had like two. They had two, and I just like just four three like every turn. I was like, oh, "This is this is not going well for me." Yeah, there, this is bad. It's cool. Like, there's multiple ways to loop them because you can mm-hmm. um, use that land that moves counters around to loop them. Nesting grounds. Yeah, and you can also use Wirewood Symbiote to loop them. Oh, is it? Oh, you can pick it up. You can pick it up. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty cool. I've yeah. I've had fun doing that kind of stuff too. Like I think those decks are just okay. I don't think they really compete on the same level as like the other stuff that we're talking about. But they're they're a lot of fun. Like yeah, just putting like a weird engine together. It is um, uh, funny. Like it's so hard to go bigger than the Aldrazi deck. Oh yeah, and there and there's so much ramp and so many scions. It's so easy for them to get to big. Yeah, and you're just like, I played a three three, two counters on it. Now it's gonna be a five five when it attacks, and they're just like, they <laughs> <laughs> go, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool, thanks. Speaking of having scions laying around, um, have you built many decks with that weird like impulse draw scion engine thing? Malevolent rumbles. Yeah, is that the one? It's like two in a red. Do two in a red? Two in a red. Look at the top or exile the top three cards of your library. You can play them this turn. Oh, if you Clipsy don't Impossible. Them. Yeah, that's the one. Um, I've played it some. Like, it is weird that it is like a red ramp spell, like early in the game. Mm-hmm. And just and cast a, late in the game. Yeah, just like everything you could want late in the game. Yeah. And, like, the fact that you exile them, but then they go to your graveyard... Yeah, that's weird. ...is, like... Like, it. there's not, like, the normal downside where, like, you wouldn't have access to the cards later. Yeah. Right? You just get access to them and, like, you know, for whatever, like, Jolt of the Wake or mm-hmm. the... What is it? Prophetic Ritual? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you just get them back and you're like, oh, okay. Like, there's no downside here. Yeah, or the E-Wit. Yeah, so the card is really good. Again, that's another way that you can like 
play seven drops on turn four. Mm -hmm. The uh, I think the other cool thing about that card is the scions kind of matter. So mm -hmm. especially in that deck, like if you're playing that Titan guy, that gold card that puts counters on everything, or your writhing chrysalis or whatever, um, like there's a real decision that you have to make there whether the scions are more important on the battlefield for use later or whether you want mm -hmm. to use them for ramp or whether you want the card like I, i've had times casting that card where like i didn't want to let the cards go to waste but it was more strategically correct to get the scion than to get you know whatever generic bear in a land out of the cards that yeah. i exiled and like the scions are also just like blockers yeah right like you know your opponent's like you know red white aggro mm -hmm. and you're just like pay three mana get three chump blockers that are gonna buy me yeah the buy me the like extra two turns i need to just like play like enormous things to beat you mm -hmm. i have certainly lost a game to three mana make three blockers yeah and you're just like i you're like i have an eight one uh, uh guy with a cranial ram on him yep. that cannot ever get through and I think that's, like, also, like, you know, what makes, you know, black-red can be, like, difficult. They have, like, the 2-1 the flyer, mm -hmm. the the affinity guy. Do they have another flyer? Yeah, the 3-3 three, three modular guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that card's good. And the, um, um, the dragon. Oh, yeah, the, the affinity guy. Yeah. But, like, you know, those aggressive starts of, like, um... Razor Lash, is it Razor Lash Transmogrant, or am I mixing it up with the other Transmogrant? Uh, I think you're mixing it up, but I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, the, the Transmogrant, the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. For, right, you go, like, Transmogrant into, like, you know, Cranial Ram, into, like, your next Cranial Ram, and, like, it's just, like, yeah, I, like, played something, I played, like, a Writhing Chrysalis, made, like, three blockers, mm -hmm. and now I can just hang out until I, like, bounce your bounce your pest tokens or whatever yeah so it, it does make it hard to like attack on the ground mm -hmm. just because like you can there's just so much stuff mucking up the ground all the time yeah because like i've definitely had points where i'm like i have 10 scions yeah i have so many like i don't know what i'm supposed to do with these things <laughs> i guess under the bus you go i was like i guess they're a block 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 Yep. Um, Colossal Dread Mask is better than it looks. Mm -hmm. Um, turning anything into a Colossal Dread Maw, yep, even for five mana, is pretty good. Yep. Uh, I had an opponent like passing it around their creatures would like attack with something, and then just move it to the next to thing. Block. Yeah, and like the game went super late, and I was just like. I think that was, a, it was the one game I won with that Jeskai deck. I had a Flage going. Yeah. So, like, like brought the Flage back, and the next turn, like, attacked with it, gave it lifelink. Mm -hmm. So I gained six off the, like, Oof. deal three, and then six when they went to block it. And I was like, nice. okay, now I have time again. <laughs> it died. Like, they attacked with their big thing, like, pile a bunch of cards in front of it, so they die, get back the Flage. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're doing it. Um... But it was, like, really hard. Like, if I didn't have, like, a Mythic Rare that I cast four times or whatever, mm -hmm. would have totally lost to, like, dopey-looking uncommon or yeah. common. So, like, yeah, in, like, like as, like, a one-off or, like, hey, I'm, like, I need, like, a top end or, like, you know, I didn't get, like, a great Eldrazi. I just need something dumb that I can, like, play. Like, this, like, is it's dumb. Yeah. yeah. Um... As a listener to this podcast, I request that you do us the solid of never casting the whatever Wumpus guy without colorless mana. Oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Bad idea. I had my opponent cast a Wumpus yeah. without colorless mana. Would you put it? I put uh, the Ginku Shaper of the Future or whatever <laughs> and then sacked a land. <laughs> he got a 2 2. I was just like. Ooh, that was so bad. That was so bad. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll cast this next turn and get my 2-2. I got, got to cast it. Then I 
got my tutu right away and then was like, make another tutu, put counters on things. <laughs> or nice. I think I played like the the four or five, like the the put a stun counter on a thing mm-hmm. to like negate the wampus. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Doing it. That did nothing. Um the five mana bounce Eldrazi. Yeah. That like is like draw two discard or bounce or both if you like pay a wing ding. Yeah. Also, like a ridiculous card. Mm-hmm. There are so many cards that you're just like, yeah, that card's like ridiculous. Like it's unbelievable. No, I mean it's a horizon set. You're gonna have more ridiculous it cards is. than normal. It is. It is. I mean um, the same can be said for some of the stuff out of the energy deck though. Like I've seen the energy deck do some wild stuff. Uh what is it? Reverberating bolt. Yep, that card's nuts. I had my opponent plague wind me for two mana. hmm They copied it four times. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I think maybe it was three, uh, but there were there were four total deal three damages because they had to hit my one four like twice. give an exalted counter guy twice, and then they killed my other two creatures. Yeah, I was like, I could just concede here. Like you, you've made your point. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the unstable amulet is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I had was it, battle wagon and mm-hmm. amulet going. Oh, that's it was nice. like. Tap two for tap the wagon for two energy, tap amulet for a card. Yep. That's actually like uh oh what's his name? Aspiring Spike had a uh uh a modern deck mm-hmm. built around amulet. Amulet. Not not the energy aspect of it. There there was some energy in there. But the whole if you cast the card from anywhere but your hand, mm-hmm. either other than your hand, you deal one damage. Yeah. So like with Ren's Resolve. Oh yeah. And all those cards like just filling like just putting cards in exile and they're all like teal two damage. Mm-hmm. So like you can just like storm off. Like oh, all your cards cool. are like one grape shot basically. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Um I don't know, like I'm not alone on this, I don't think, but I might draft them higher than other people. The the uncommon MDFC lands. Mm-hmm. I take them really high, and like, I I see them late sometimes. Like when I was like, mm, do I take this sink in the stupor or this galvanic discharge? Like, well, I'm like red blue as it is, but like energy, so I need this. And like, it comes around like pick ten. Like, what are you people doing? I mean, some of them are certainly better than others, and if you need the fixing, like by all means, pick them up. Um, yeah, but. I don't I don't know that I'm just on snap pick everyone I see. I I've like consistently played decks that have 19 to 20 mana sources mm-hmm. but might only have 15 actual lands in the deck. Oh, okay. So, like where I'm like I like if it's a lot of times if it's close and I can like justify the pick, I will take that that land and like I keep, I'll I'll end my draft with only like four cards or like eight, sorry, eight cards, eight cards that didn't actually end up in my deck. Wow. Where, because if you think about it, my my point is right. Like in this set in particular, I think you get really punished for missing your land drops. Yes, you do. Right, like if you miss a land drop and you're behind, like you're done. Mm-hmm. Um. So if you can have. That's true. 18, 19, 20 lands in your deck. But guaranteed to not flood. Yeah, but like, you know, so you kind of have to be like, well, like, when do I want to play this? Like, you know, do I want to hold off on playing this MDFC in case like, I get my land so I can use it as a spell later? Like, you get that some of that tension mm-hmm. where you're like, mm, should I hold on to this? Should I, should I play it? Um, But also then you get like, like the blue white one. Like I usually will play it tapped like early on. Like like okay, I'm like Jess guy, I have this in a mountain, like I can play all my spells. Yeah. But then like if you draw it in another game on like turn twelve and you're just like, tap your team, kill you. Yep. Right? Like in like dual uh, fetch land can't do that. Right. Right? Doesn't have the out of tap your tap your team kill you. No, and the uh, uh like the cycling's a lot harder to hit in limited also. Mm-hmm. Like the cycle it away. Is. But the colorless is more relevant. Yeah, the colorless is really what relevant. Like the fact that you can get 
go. Four, five, six colorless sources in your deck for your wingding Eldrazi. Yeah. But then, like, also, you know, have effectively perfect mana for your um your ener- your Jeskai energy deck. Yeah. Right? Where you're like, okay, like, I can kind of do both. Mm-hmm. Is really strong. Yep. And I mean, like, I I take a lot of them and like you know not, not like not a news flash here, but like I'll take them like when they're like only two of my colors. Yeah, right. Like never like it's you don't have to be all three. It's like I'll be like oh like you know red white black land. Okay, well this is my red white source. Right. And it also like you know if you take a couple like you know you know let's say you're Team Aldrazi and you. Take like the the Grixis land and the Jund land, mm-hmm. right? And then someone passes you one of the absurd commander cards, like the Make a Goif token guy. Yeah, you've already got two black sources you have access to. Right. I've de- I've had a couple decks where it's just like where I've played that card where it was like I'm red green, but I guess I'm Jund now. Yep. Because I got this, and. Uh, so do you remember when we were doing Mystery Booster mm-hmm. like drafts a million years ago? Yep. Uh, that was Oka, it was uh, GP Oka. It was. Uh, there was we were drafting with like uh, I think he was a Canadian pro, and some of his friends. Uh, uh no, uh, it was um, Topol's friends. Was he, oh, it was Topol's were, friends? Yeah, okay. they were German. German, okay. Yeah. And uh, sorry, German friends. Um, but they um. He was just talking about like sometimes you open a commander card and it's just completely and totally busted and overpowerful overpowered and you just have to take it. Yeah. Right? Those commander cards that like show up for the most part are completely and totally <laughs> busted and overpowered and you just have to take them. Yeah. Um oh is it is it Satya? The 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 Jeskai one mm. that like you it has haste, you attack, you get to energy and you make a copy of something yeah and then you have to pay an energy at the end of turn or it goes away mm-hmm. like okay like i guess i'm dead right and then like the the then the the jund one just like it's like a is it a five six for five i think it then a, makes oh well, maybe i'm thinking of a different card it's it's some it's something six it's enormous yeah like you resolve it, they can no longer attack you. Yeah. And then like you just get to like a, if you have more attackers of them, you just make Tarmogoyfs. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, this is unreasonable. Yeah. Um now, that being said, the the uh the the queen of Asuva, mm-hmm. you know, th- don't take that one. <laughs> don't take that one. It's a 1-5 that has no text. Basically. I guess it makes things modified. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, like, even the the one that's like the O five 5 that has power equal to the... Or star 5 that has power equal to the greatest power in creatures in the graveyard. That's the one. Like, that even, like... Of, yeah. Like, that one even lets you, like, cast spells that you milled this turn. Mm-hmm. And it mills cards for you. It's just like a card advantage engine. Yeah. But I've like I've had like a lot of I think I've had it in like two or three decks. The Jund one is just like just great. Mm-hmm. And so like giving yourself the out with like you know hey there's nothing that really seems like for me in this pack. Like I'm gonna take the land that's like two of my colors. Yeah. And then you like look down and be like oh I have like three sources of black mana, I guess I can, like, take a single black pip card of some sort. Make it work. Make it work. Yeah, I can take a Wither and Bloom yeah. and have a little bit more removal or something. Yep. The card's been pretty good, too. Yeah, I mean, they I were just, like... you're not high on black, but... Yeah. But, I mean, the, like, I've played it, and the fact that they're just, like, can we make it do everything? Yeah. Can it? Can it kill a thing? And then also modify a creature in black or yep. uh, or the black black green or black white deck. 
okay, we could we we can make that work. And it's like, okay, like yeah. no, no chill. Just gonna do everything. <laughs> uh, so, any other sneaky good cards that you wanted to mention before we wrap it up? Okay, it's not sneaky good, but um, Aether Revolt. Have you played Aether Revolt? I have not. Oh my god. I had a game where I was at... I haven't even seen one. I mean, I've only... I've, I, I've, I think I've, I've done half two, the drafts you have, but... I've played two or three. I had a draft where my opponent was at 18, and they just had swung out, and I blocked in such a way that I was at one. Mm -hmm. And I had, like... I had a Scurry of Gremlins, so, again, ridiculous card. Like, if you're anywhere touching those colors, it can make it work. Yeah. Take it. But I was like, well, it's like I can play this. I forget what creature it was. I can get three energy and deal three. Then I can play Scurry of Gremlins and like deal them four or five. I was like, and like I can kill this thing. I was like, wait, no, like I can just kill them from eighteen <laughs> with like three creatures. Like okay, like it just turns every one of your like creatures that gives you energy into like lightning bolts because they all give you three energy. Yeah. So, like, if you can resolve it and then, like, get to untap. Like, you've got to, like, have a deck where, like, you know, you are playing creatures and, like, going up the ground a little bit. Then you, like, play it and then you're just like, all right, every one of my creatures has a lightning bolt attached to it. And I'm just going to, like, work through your stuff. Yeah. And then Lord help them if you have a fetch line. <laughs> because then all of your stuff does an extra two. Yeah. So you play, like, the common tapper. Mm-hmm. And you deal something five. The card is so good. Like, it's one of those, like, if you see it, pack one, pick one. Right? I think you, like, you can take it and build around it. Again, if you're trying to max out your win rate, maybe you uh, take the Wrythe and Chrysalis that's in the pack. Yeah. But, like, you know, that card is so good that, like, when it resolves, you're just like, oh, like, everything I draw now is amazing. So that card is super good. Uh, the Ravenous Gremlins or whatever is one of the best uncommons. Like, you can kill people out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like, just, like, not even fair. They're, like, at 20 with, like, three creatures. And you're like, I think I can kill you with my, like, four <laughs> creatures and these two, go these two gremlins. Like, all right, let's go. Like, I have five power on the board. Play these gremlins. I have seven attack you deal 30 and it's like that wasn't fair at all it's like yeah <laughs> it's fine um any other like sneaky good things that you're just like i can't think of anything else i did see a uh, circovitz the guy who like is kind of like talks about 17 lands data mm -hmm. he was in the the early access i was watching lsv play early access i've been watching other people do drafts of this format i should be watching Numont. But um, he had a a deck with Buried Alive and five Sneaky Snackers. Oh, that's cute. Circovitz did. Uh, he didn't. He did not win. He got like clowned by a very, 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 very good energy deck uh, that LSV had. It was uh, two Wrath of the Skies and an Aether Revolt. Oh, that'll do it. Which turns your Wrath of the Skies into a Fireball. Yes. Um, but. Like, that was cute. Like, you're like, oh, like, this is exactly why Buried Alive's in this set, mm -hmm. is to go get Sneaky Snackers. <laughs> like, that's cool. <laughs> All right. You got anything else? No, I think that's going to do it. I will say, though, if you haven't, like, fired up Arena to do a draft of this set... It's worth it. it it's, worth, it's worth your time. Yep. Like, d d go in, do one. Uh, it is kind of intimidating. There is a lot going on. But it's also like a lot of fun, and it's cheaper than you're going to draft in paper, which can't always yeah, be said. Way cheaper, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked so. that they kept it the same price. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that's I'm why I said something last week. I'm I'm glad that you uh, dusted off the old laptop and knocked yeah. some drafts out because I knew this we format was right up your alley. Yeah, this is this is good. Anthony said the same thing. He was like, he's like, is it? When I realized the format was grindy and full of Eldrazi, I figured you would do great. Yeah. It's like, this is, this is like, <laughs> right. It's a, it's like, oh gosh, what was it? Oh, oh the school set, Strixhaven. Mm -hmm. 
right? Where like the best deck was like teamer ramp nonsense. Yeah. Right? Like this like this has a teamer ramp nonsense deck that I love. Mm-hmm. And then it has this like kind of like aggressive, like kind of fidgety, like energy deck. Yep. That like you know, you I've also enjoyed the love. Energy- yeah, the, like I enjoy the like fidgety nature of like, okay, how do I spend my energy? What's the best way to do this? Yeah. And then like so like that's like an interesting wrinkle to have. And mm-hmm. then you also just have like raw big monster. And you're like, oh, this is great. Yep. All right. So with all that, I think we got a show. We got a show. So if you want to uh tell us about your um successes in MH three draft or suggest some future show topics, uh reach out to us on Facebook, Discord, Twitter um email all those links are in the description say hey uh say program the show yeah do that program the show i like that hit us up uh if you're looking to support the show as well as program it uh you can do so one of two ways the first is with our tcg player affiliate link casualtryhard.com slash tcg surf on over there shop as normal support the show at the same time we would really appreciate it uh the second is patreon you can chip a couple bucks in. You get access to our unshow, which I'm going to call that that from now on. Uh, you also get access to show notes, so you get a sneak peek about what the upcoming episode's going to be about, and you get to support us at the same time. And nobody said anything about me cutting it short last week, so I'm going to do it again this week, because nobody's listening anymore. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet. <laughs>